Ah, the halcyon days of EDM. Tons of leather, sweaty punk clubs, front 242 stickers sewn into jackets, and a hell of a lot of songs in German blasting from everyone's car in the parking lot. Er, wait, one letter seems to be off here. Sorry about that, guys. All those descriptors I just mentioned do describe a genre, but it's not the bro-step-fueled movement of 2011 known as EDM, but a genre that emerged out of punk and early electronic music in the late 70s known as electronic body music, or EBM. EBM influenced many artists and genres and developed a unique aggressive sound throughout the 1980s. Yet it still in many ways remains underground, and that is why it will be the feature of this week's episode of Lost Genres. EBM, despite its relatively unknown status, is a vital, volatile, elastic form of electronic and industrial music that fueled the careers of many bands and had vast influences over many mainstream artists of the 90s, most notably Nine Inch Nails. Now, there is a lot of ground to cover in terms of awesome music and awesome bands, but before we get into that, we need to look into the origins of EBM. EBM's origins come from many distinct sources of music, and among the most prominent were punk rock, kraut rock, industrial music, and early electronic music a la Kraftwerk, Tangerine Dream, or Yellow Magic Orchestra. One interesting thing to note, if we look at these influences on EBM, we notice a distinctive underlying factor, Germany. While most forms of popular Western music in the 20th century tended to originate from either England or the United States, EBM's Teutonic origin gave it a very distinct and unique feel that can still be seen in distinguishing characteristics in bands such as Rammstein. While there are many bands that contributed to the formation of the genre, if there was one band who could be traced back as the godhead, it would have to be German duo DAF. Throughout their albums in the early 80s, they were able to successfully synthesize all the aforementioned genres together into something truly new. The sound of DAF was something truly groundbreaking. While their songs were driven by synthesizer riffs similar to Kraftwerk and Tangerine Dream, it was the introduction of punk energy, riffs, and rhythm that indicated that DAF was onto something new. DAF's early 80s albums set the visual and lyrical aesthetic tone for the tropes of the genre as well. Buzz cuts inspired by punk and leather attire with a homoerotic slant borrowed from the German BDSM underground were deliberately chosen as visual elements to distinguish their style from genres that were also peaking and rising in popularity at this time, specifically disco or heavy metal. DAF's albums, while not popular in the mainstream, found widespread listenership among the underground throughout the 1980s, and provided the spark and impetus for other musicians to take up the sound of EBM and make their own music. There was British duo Nietzer Ebb, who took up the sound and heavily emphasized the punk aspects inherent in EBM, while on the other end of the spectrum, artists like Belgium's Front 242 further entrenched the satirical, militaristic elements into the genre by emphasizing a strong industrial influence in the music. Throw in albums by Frontline Assembly, De Krups, and others, and you begin to see how vital and internationally spread out the scene was in the 80s. In fact, as EBM blossomed from the early works of DAF, it arguably peaked in the late 80s, and there is one particular album that demonstrates this fever pitch of influence better than any other. Nine Inch Nails' Pretty Hate Machine was released in 1989 and was their opening battle cry to the world. Now, I am sure I do not need to go over how important musically, culturally, and historically Nine Inch Nails are, let alone go over how truly massive they were in the pre-internet 90s. And while Nine Inch Nails have transcended almost any genre to become truly seminal artists, their first album, Pretty Hate Machine, was undoubtedly indebted to EBM music of the latter 1980s, pioneered by people like Nietzsche Ebb and Front 242. While the whole album has traces of EBM, even the most popular song from the record, Head Like a Hole, does not escape the influence entirely. While at a slower, slinkier, and dare I say, 
sexier tempo than most EBM songs, the synth line and groove are entirely consistent with previous stalwart songs like Headhunters or Joining the Chant. Let's take a look at the distinctive musical characteristics that set EBM apart. The first thing to note is something I want to call the principle of guitar riffs without guitars. A lot of EBM songs often feature what sounds like punkish hard rock guitar riffs, but played very distinctly on synthesizers like the Oberheim OBXA or the Jupiter Juno 8. In fact, because of the synthesized nature of these figures, often the bass frequencies and middle frequencies that would typically be spread between the bass and guitar in a traditional rock band end up fused and create this really vast musical force that often feels overpowering and primordial in ways that makes you want to, well, move your body, hence electronic body music. It's the contrast of this primordial noise mixed with the ultra-dry production and almost exclusively synthesized drums that gave the music this dualism of being both vast and compact and sleek at the same time. On the music theory front, nothing too radical was going on. Various sequences almost exclusively in minor keys were used to power the structure of the songs. However, when this was mixed with the aforementioned elements, it adds a vast, sinister, sexual, and abrasive nature to this truly unique music. And what of the cultural impact of EBM on music culture, or culture in general? Well, as I stated, the genre was, for most of its existence, barring Nine Inch Nails' debut album, an underground genre. There were no chart hits or MTV videos in rotations, none of that. But I do think it impacted music culture in a few key ways it is important to not overlook. First, it introduced the idea of taking the attitude of rock music out of the traditional context of guitar, bass, drums, rock band setup, showing that the attitude and the sound could be supplanted in other contexts and be just as effective at conveying a message of defiance as the traditional setup was. Secondly, in that same spirit, it introduced the synthesizer as a dynamic instrument that had more use than just providing padding and glimmering leads in Donna Summer songs. It showed that the synthesizer could be dark, monstrous, and heavy, which I think in a key way connects to the music of today in many profound ways. Considering how many electronic duo acts we have seen over the last 15 years with hyper-abrasive sounds, it's no underestimation to say EBM's influence spreads very far. And lastly, it subverted many tropes of traditional pop rock lyrical subjects and structures. It was neither the love songs of the mainstream such as Madonna or Duran Duran, nor was it the juvenile fantasies of bands like Iron Maiden or Van Halen. Lyrically, EBM bands often took a stance that teetered between genuinely dark and frightening and satirical and biting, often about the same subjects. While the band members could look like fascist thugs, with symbology and stage setups that spoke of a militaristic posture politically, this would often be countered with an overt paean to homoeroticisms and criticisms of mass culture, thereby revealing the menacing spectacle as a critique and not an endorsement. And let's keep it real, some of these kids were the 80s equivalent of modern day Reddit edgelords who thought militaristic, pseudo-communist, and fascist imagery would scare their parents and the government. Kids gonna be kids, I guess. So to wrap this all up, I think EBM is a lost genre that more people should know about. I wouldn't say it's hyper-obscure in the way some of my other videos in this series will no doubt be, but in an anecdotal surveying of my friends, I sense the awareness on its influence on both electronic and punk music is not high. I really think it is a truly unique style that's appearance and culture flew way under the radar in the 80s, and there's a lot one can take and enjoy from this style. Some recommendations I would make in terms of listing would have to be DAF's Alles ist gut to see where the genre comes from, and if you want to listen to some seminal classics, 
Front 242's Front by Front and Nietzscher Ebb's That Total Age are defining albums in the genre. Overall, I think EBM is a vital genre whose influence is definitely understated in so many styles of music, including many today. And that is why I have decided to highlight it here and say it should no longer be lost. Thank you.